Hello and welcome to France in Focus. I'm Delano D'Souza. On the show today, we've come to a nuclear power plant southwest of Paris. The nuclear industry remains central to France. The country has 19 nuclear power plants and 58 reactors, yet the vision for the sector's future continues to evolve. Here's a look back at how nuclear power has shaped France over the past 50 years. On the 28th of September 1956, the Marcoule nuclear plant came online. The first in Europe, it was a proud moment for General de Gaulle. The next year, construction began on France's first nuclear centrifuge. It would begin producing electricity in 1963. Regular training exercises took place to ensure safety. It's a very clean energy and less expensive than other types of energy. Nuclear power reinvigorated parts of France. For the 700 inhabitants of this little village in Brittany, the construction of a nuclear plant in the area gave them a promise of a future. It creates jobs. It's created jobs in a sector that was dead before. In the 1960s, electricity use went up rapidly in households, with a rise in electrical consumer goods. And the 1973 oil crisis meant the cost of energy shot up. OPEC nations quadrupled the price of oil. France put more resources into nuclear power. I've taken the decision to build 13 nuclear plants starting in 1974 and 1975. The Super Phoenix power plant was designed to be the largest in the world. But not everyone was impressed. Ecologists from all over Europe campaigned for its closure. In 1977, the demonstrations turned violent. 60,000 protesters came up against thousands of police officers. One person died and over 200 were injured, but nuclear energy prevailed. Fast forward to 1986, and the Chernobyl catastrophe frightened France. At Chernobyl, you saw what happened there. It'll be the same here if anything goes wrong. In 2011, another disaster. The Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan was hit by a tsunami. The vulnerability of nuclear power was brought to the foreground. Old plants like Fessenheim had safety scares, with risks of flooding and seismic activity. But many locals were still pro-nuclear. If EDF employees leave Fessenheim, half the population will be gone. Today, around 75% of France's power comes from nuclear energy, and the country earns around 3 billion euros each year from exporting nuclear-powered electricity. This nuclear plant has four reactors, two that are currently operational and the two behind me that are currently being dismantled. Around a third of the nuclear reactors in France are set to hit the 40-year mark by 2022. So what happens then? Should they all be dismantled or should they be renovated and allowed to continue operating? And how much will this all cost? Fessenheim is France's best-known nuclear power plant. It's also its oldest. It was commissioned back in 1978, and along with dozens of other French nuclear plants, it's starting to age. 34 of France's 58 reactors are more than 30 years old. But how old is too old for a nuclear reactor? The rules don't give the reactors a definitive lifetime, but the operator must thoroughly inspect the site's safety every 10 years. After that, the Nuclear Safety Authority will come to a decision on the site's future operation. France's reactors were designed to operate over a period of 40 years. But state energy giant EDF wants to extend their lifetimes. And to do that, it has to renovate the reactors something that doesn't come cheap. Overhauling EDF's array of reactors will cost around 48 billion euros, according to the energy company. France's court of auditors reckons that's way below the mark. They put the cost at closer to 100 billion euros. Here in Saint-Alban, work on refitting the reactor started back in February. 
The reactor vessels and containment buildings are key elements when looking at the lifetime of nuclear reactors. These two components are closely scrutinized and analyzed. It makes sense to extend the lifetime of saint albans two reactors. The equipment's in perfect condition. With a little bit of investment, we can guarantee its safety. But in the long term, the plant's closure is inevitable. The French government aims to reduce the share of energy generated by nuclear reactors from 75% to 50% of the total by 2025. Nine reactors are currently being decommissioned in France. The procedure is both complex and costly. Toxic material must first be removed. Then the equipment has to be dismantled before the buildings themselves are knocked down. The structure housing the reactor is the last to go. It's an operation that can take dozens of years. According to a recent report carried out by the French parliament, EDF has largely underestimated both the difficulty and the cost of the task facing it. The task force has determined that European operators earmark between 900 million and 1.3 billion euros to dismantle each reactor, whereas EDF only sets aside around 350 million euros. In the region of Brittany, the Brennelis nuclear reactor has been inactive since 1985. But more than 30 years later, it still hasn't been fully decommissioned. The process should have been completed by 2002. Now it won't be finished until at least the 2030s. Main Yankee in the northeastern US is the only nuclear power plant in the world that has been fully decommissioned. <laughs> France so reliant on nuclear power, getting rid of nuclear waste remains a top priority. So how exactly is contamination avoided and what precautions do companies take to ensure a nuclear spill never happens? This isn't just any research centre. That's because most of the work takes place underground. 500 metres below the surface, across a network of tunnels, scientists and engineers are working to have this site ready to store vast amounts of France's nuclear waste. This includes some of the most hazardous waste on Earth. This site in Bure, eastern France, was chosen because of the quality of its clay. For the storage of radioactive waste, put simply, the main enemy is water. Between 130 and 150 meters underground, there is no water circulating. That's a big advantage. This site will house intermediate and high-level waste. Only a tiny fraction of nuclear waste is high-level. Despite this, it accounts for most of total radioactivity and takes much longer to decay to safe levels. The waste will be vitrified and then placed in stainless steel containers that will be delivered to these tunnels. All the handling will be done by robots. They'll put the cases that we are currently testing in place and even if needed, recover them up to a century later. Once the facility is eventually filled, it will become a sort of gigantic clay coffin that's designed to stay sealed for at least 100,000 years. But campaigners say this is impossible to guarantee. An underground structure over such a long period of time, how can we be sure that it won't move? That there will be no earthquakes, no fault lines created? That it will remain watertight? The waste containers won't last. In 2018, the project will be assessed by the French Nuclear Safety Authority. If it gains approval, what has been a site for research will officially become a deep storage facility. The plan then is to clear the nearby trees. But environmentalists have been putting up a fight. And in the summer of 2016, a French court declared that such clearing of the land was illegal. Protesters then claimed a victory. But the National Agency for Nuclear Waste Disposal, which is in charge of this project, say whatever happens to the trees, the project will go ahead. 
We're in a town not far from where the nuclear plant is located. Many of the residents living here work in the facility. Their futures are often tied to the fortunes of the French nuclear industry. Despite their proximity to the plant, they don't fear for their safety. It's one of the oldest nuclear power plants in France. And directly in its shadow, the town of Yersor Ombi. Its reactors were constructed in 1978, a few months after Fessenheim. But most residents aren't worried by their nuclear neighbor. Even living next door, I'm not concerned. It could be the power plant, or it could be a car that kills us. There's no such thing as zero risk. We couldn't evacuate if there's a technical problem, and there's about 300, 400 people living in the village next door, not just by clicking your fingers. There's no ignoring the reactors. People moving to the village are warned of the possibility of an accident and given a welcome guide by the mayor. People who move to the area are given one of these leaflets, which explain the security measures put in place in case there is an alert. And there's a coupon included to get iodine tablets from the pharmacy. At the base of the reactor, these residents are against the power plant. Members of an anti-nuclear group, they're worried about the incidents that have already taken place. There have already been problems, a big one. There's been a few small incidents. I have a copy of the Canard Enchaîné, a newspaper from 1986, that says the nuclear power station almost overheated. Today, around 6 million people in France live less than 30 kilometers from a nuclear plant. That's it for this edition of France in Focus. From all of us on the team, thank you very much for watching. Visited, presented by Stuart Norval. Kosovo, once a part of the former Yugoslavia, has been independent since 2008 when it split from neighboring Serbia. Most Kosovars are ethnic Albanians, but for the Serbs, Kosovo is the cradle of their civilization. And the Serbian minority in the north of the country refuses to recognize the government. Memories of the vicious conflict pitting Serbs against Albanian separatists remain deeply ingrained. A third of Kosovo's population is under 15 years old. Perhaps its youth will finally break the cycle of communitarian hatred. Revisited on France 24 and France24.com.